We're still in Psalm 16, and we will, um, well, no promises, but I'm pretty sure we'll finish this out. But <clears throat> I want to go back and make sure that we, we understand certain factors uh, that we covered last time. <clears throat> so we're going to look at Psalm 16 and verse 1 and 2, okay? <clears throat> now this is... Um, this is David writing this, um, and we find that out from Acts, the book of Acts, where Peter says that's who that is. But we also find out from the book of Acts and Peter's, one of his first sermons, that, um, that this, this isn't about David, though. It may be David writing it, but he even... If you'll really look at uh, in comparison in that in Acts two, you'll see that uh, he literally uh, says, you know, that it's it's the Lord, it's Jesus, but it's not just Jesus; it's Jesus going through for some of our languages and whatever, going through the court or going through the sufferings that were are his. <clears throat> and um, and so we're getting way in advance of that year, thousands of years uh, with Peter. We're getting it from David at this time, and we have the use in verse two of the word Adonai, and he is uh, his main appeal is to Adonai. And, um, and that is the one who covers, the one who, uh, when not just under any circumstance, not any trial, but when you're going through the sufferings of Christ, Adonai is there um, doing many of the things that we've already talked about up to this time. But we've got, we want to see, see them in a little different angle, but still see some. Uh, so he says, he's praying, and he says, preserve me. Well, this is, this is Jesus then, because it says that, you know. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Okay, so preserve me through this trial. Preserve me in the midst of evildoers' attacks. Preserve me. Um, but then we, we will find out the way that he preserves him. He doesn't, Adonai isn't in the business of taking away the trials. Um, he's in the business of helping see us through that. If we will acknowledge there is such a thing and rely on him. And that's so he says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. So I, here he is. Jesus and David, understanding this relationship with Adonai. And so I, I'm trusting you in this. I'm not asking you to take it away. But, um, O oh my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. And that second word, Lord, there is Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee. All right, so there's a couple of things. Regular things that would come up over and over in relationship with the mention of Adonai. And one is your soul. Uh, you can get into these, these trials and you can freak out and you can just call them regular old trials. And you can just say, well, people are just being mean to me. And you can, or you can say, well, it's just an attack of the devil. Well, people are being mean to you and maybe the devil's in it too on some degree. But God has set that particular trial up for you to get your soul, you know, to have your soul with him. And um, so that, that dealing with the soul is huge, in, particularly in this trial, because, you know, there's so much to freak out over unless you have an Adonai. And that's what the whole point is, and that's what the... That's what, this, these verses are trying to communicate and what Peter was trying to communicate in 1 Peter so that we understand it's not just that we're not alone, though we're not alone. It is 
that there is a process that is being overseen by one of the Trinity, by one of Elohim. And, uh, we're, and that one represents the Adonai. And so Jesus is the one in, in um, let's see, Jesus as the member of Elohim that is in weakness and extremity appeals to his Adonai. So here we have it. Jesus is the one in the trial. Jesus is the one in willing weakness. Jesus is the one in extremity. And yet, this psalm, which I, show, I said, Peter totally points it out in the book of Acts, that this is Jesus saying this. So this is the sufferings of Christ. This is, can I say it like this? This is the original. This is the original. All right. So his soul, and then the next thing is, thou art, um, uh, thou art my Lord, thou art my Adonai. I have Adonai as my overseer, if you will. And then he says, my goodness extendeth not to thee. You know, he's, he's in weakness. He's saying, you know, I... I am in willing weakness here. I don't even try to appeal to you on the basis of my goodness. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be with you in the trial and, and give you back what you're trying to get out of it, which is the nature of the lamb. <clears throat> All right. So let's say I wrote... Uh, but then in verses uh, 5 through 11, so maybe I should read that. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Um, thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins are instructed, uh, also instruct me in the night seasons. <clears throat> All right, so what I wrote here was, but then below in those verses, we see the recovery as he is no longer moved by the sufferings. He has passed through the rough part of the sufferings, the corridor. Notice specifically in verse 8 where he does not say that the trial is removed, but only that he now is no longer moved. We'll get into that because there's some good stuff down there in verse uh, 8 and 9. Um, <clears throat> But the, the point of what I just shared in plain English is he didn't ask for deliverance. He asked for his soul to be lining up with the Lord, with the, with the Adonai, um, so that, uh, as we'll see even in those verses, so that um, it, will, it will gladden the heart of God and it will gladden his heart that he was right with him. Okay? Uh, notice specifically in verse 8 where he does not... Okay, so I said that. Um, also take note of the interchange happening within Elohim as marked... Well, my notes marked in red. Okay, so the Lord is my portion. Uh, thou maintainest my lot. Uh, this, is, this is Jesus. The, you know, the second person of the Elohim. The Trinity. That is talking about and relating to the rest of uh, Elohim uh, and one of them or both of them are his Adonai. Okay? So when we get in trials, we usually, we're just praying to get out of it or, you know, whatever. But uh, we might even sort of, you know, hint that this is, this is the sufferings of Christ and I want to be with you. But in all of the, the things that I've found, there tends to be this interchange with the person who's going through it and the, the one representing Adonai to them are the Father and the Son. And um, I think, I, I don't think that a lot of times with us, there is this true recognition that we are involved in a thing that involves the eternal nature of God um, as seen in the name Elohim. Okay, so um, 
uh, and uh, he says, I have a goodly heritage and I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. So, um, so though he is in the trial and crucifixion, yet he is helped. Okay. Jesus could have called 10,000 angels, but he would never do that. Why? It has to do with Elohim and Adonai. He would never do that. He would never do that because that would be him putting forth his hand to preserve himself. And if you're going to be in that corridor, you need to be under the one that's responsible for you. That's the way that Godhead works. And that's the likeness and image that he wants us to enter into with them. Which, if you think about it, if that was, I mean, he made heaven and earth and let us make man, let us make, I mean, or let us, uh, you know, let there be light and then let there be, you know, the skies and the stars and let there be, you know, the earth and then let there be animals and let there be this and that. Uh, but then let us make man in our image and after our likeness, spoken by Elohim not one person of the Trinity, them, and not separate, but them together. A joint, uh, uh, venture till they got what they wanted, and that was their image. And so, uh, so, Okay. If that's true, then you got you got the beginning here, and you got creation. You know, let's just put creation right here. So here's here's the eternity eternity past, and then here's creation. Now this was this goes without you know. Here's creation, and it let us make man in our own image. Elohim speaking of that, and we will be a, the Adonai of the one that ventures into this. So everything else that happens until the end down here, nothing is as important to him than that we are able to go through the sufferings of Christ and do, you know, we, see, we say, well, Jesus said, uh, Love your brother. Okay, well, you know, I don't know how good we do with that. Love your neighbor. Um, if they slap you, you know, turn the other cheek. <clears throat> you know, if they take something away from you, give them something more. All right, what's that all about? Well, these are the raw. These are the laws of the of the kingdom. The king himself taught us that when he walked the earth. No, this is not like these are the rules of the kingdom. This is. This is what we want out of you. This isn't what they want out of you. What they want out of you is the spirit that produces that. And that only comes from them. That's an eternal spirit. Jesus gave himself by the eternal spirit. And that's once that spirit in us by Christ, and the only way that could happen and not be mixed up is, number one, we need to be truly dead with Christ instead of it be a, a doctrine whereby we hold it up in church and in writing and preaching and whatever, sharing with people. But in our lives and the way that we live, especially in the trials, the unjust trials, the unfair trials, that's the one God's really looking at us at. And he, he's looking for that spirit. Well, we're just going... You know, uh, at, uh, at the worst, we're thinking, well, they slapped me and I didn't turn my other cheek, but at least that's not that bad. What's well, a total violation of Elohim? It's a total violation of love. God is love. Jesus isn't love. Love is selfless giving between one another, where whoever's down, whoever's in the trial, 
doesn't have to worry about themselves because Elohim is taking care of it, not to remove everything, but ordering it perfectly so that you could, if you so choose not to go with your soul, pass it. So, first one is, got to be dead, really dead, no doctrines. What's the point of the doctrine of being dead with Christ if, it, if nobody lives by it? I mean, I mean, be honest. Should, shouldn't we just like staple our tongue to the roof of our mouth then if we're going to talk about that and yet have no desire or no thought or it doesn't come up hardly at all? In fact, it's not really that important. What's important is that I have a ministry in the earth or you, have, you do your thing in the earth and we all... Live for Jesus. That's not living for Jesus. Well, let's put it this way. Maybe you are living for Jesus on some level, but you're not living by him. That's because there has to be a death. And number two, when we all have a soul and God didn't crucify our soul, he didn't want to. We go, well, that's my worst enemy when I'm in the trial. Well, he knows that. He's, he's aware of that. But you got something more than a worst enemy there. You've got your heart that is after the Lord. You've got his heart that wants, wants this lamb out of us in this trial. And you've got Adonai who is there to assist. Should we even fall and stumble, his, his goal would be to bring something, uh, uh, and I'll just be vague here, to bring something along that lifts us back to that place and then we make a determination we will follow through and we're going to get out of this corridor in the nature of Christ or, or we're going to get out of the sufferings of Christ by the nature of Christ in us. Okay. So, maybe we won't finish this little thing here because I'm taking a lot of time on this thing. But, the, you know, if what I said here about this eternity thing, and it was really, you know, and, and in the Old Testament it's always, you know, don't, don't uh, serve other idols, don't make idols, don't da 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 da, don't do this, don't, you know, make, uh, you know, false images and all that kind of stuff. And what if that was like, I don't care if you're going to bow down to some stone. What you're made for is what I care about. You're made not to do that, but to do this. We're trying to not do that instead of do this, which is get his image in us and glorify him. But we're just trying not to, well, you know, I'm not going to pray to my idol today or something, you know, because I'm, I'm being good. Well, you know, all of that, you know, even if that wasn't sin, it falls short of the glory of God which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, falls short of that. So, so we do, and we, we do all this stuff, and, you know, and, and we go to church, and we, we do all these things. And, you know, and so our little, our little speck, our little life right here, you know, as we are living on this planet, in the scope of God's, in the scope of God's plan, in the rushing waters of his reality, it just washes us away in that sense. You say, well, you saying I'm going to go to hell. No, I don't, I don't know anything about hell. I mean, in this sense. You say, well, you need to. No, no, I don't. I don't. I, what I need to do is go after him for him and not religion, and not all this stuff. And I need to do that with all my heart and all my soul. The first commandment, love the Lord thy God. And well, I love the Lord with, you know, da, da 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 Okay. Most of you never even heard of much to do with Elohim or Adonai until this, these classes. Um, so that is the Lord our God. In many of the translations, the Lord my God is... Um, in, Elohim, my Adonai. So, there is, and why am I saying all this? 
Okay, well, because this is what I teach. And what I teach is important. And you need to get on board with what I... No. 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 I'm saying all this because I believe that it's Elohim's heart, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so together that this is what we would like. This is what we would like. To get something out of here that had eternity with it. To get something out of here that could flow with us, that could give and receive. That it wouldn't all be about just receiving. It wouldn't be the only thought and the only mind is my thought about me, my situation, my trials, my ministry, my this, my that, my family, my job, my, my, my. Give me, give me, give me. That, that doesn't fall short of Elohim. That's the complete opposite of him who gives and gives and gives and gives, see? But he's giving all the time because it's his nature. But there is meant to be a reciprocal heart that loves the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and strength. That loves, you know, you know, and that there is this thought. There is this constant thought. There is, that's what I'm, I'm really trying to bring out here is that um, you notice that, you know, in these verses and in other verses that we've talked about, uh, uh, let's go back to the original Adonai where I, I uh, missed it and called it Elohim and then found out there was such a name and there was something to do with that, something eternal. You go back there and we see we haven't even finished that out. I don't think we got much past verse 3 of chapter 18. But it's, it's, it's marvelous. It is, it is too beautiful for human eyes in a certain sense. Because we're so, all so selfish. Abraham calls God Adonai in Genesis 15. And all he can say to the Lord is, even using that name, um, do this for me, do that for me, uh, worse than that. Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that for me? You promised you were going to do this. And then you get into chapter 17, where because God bailed on, on him and was gone for 13 years and didn't show up, shows up again, and uh, he, you know, God, what does he do? He, in Genesis 17, he just starts talking again. I will do this. I have given you the land. I will give you a seed. I will do this. I will do that for you. I will make your name great. I will do the, all of this great stuff. And finally, when Abraham opens his mouth, God has just told him, I will give you the seed that I want to put in you. It won't come from someone external to you, like Lot or Eliezer of Damascus. No, he, God was emphatic about that in those chapters, 15 and 17. And, and, uh, and, and no, it's going to come from your own, it's going to come from your insides. But it must be this seed. Abraham says, okay. Oh, that you would let Ishmael walk before you as the seed. And that's when God disappeared on him. He said, well, there's no talking to you, buddy. There's no talking to you. You can't get off of yourself. You can't get off of your flesh. You're, try you're justifying. You are... You are uh, uh, deceiving yourself, deceiving, and you're, you're living in the lap of that and loving it. 
So God just says, that's it. You know, I don't plan on being around a whole lot. He wasn't around at all. Was it 13 years? Yeah, 13 years. So when God shows back up, when he shows back up, Abraham has followed through with the end of chapter 17 and got everybody in his house circumcised. We're getting the flesh out. We're not putting up with this. We're not putting up with that. I'm not putting up with this flesh in you. I'm not putting up with this flesh in me. I'm not going to allow this whole thing to start and to begin and to be founded upon flesh, my flesh. Or your flesh. So the circumcision happens after that. And then the next thing that happens is Walking down the road is Elohim. Three men. Here comes God. 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 And we get an introduction to really begin to understand Him and that there's more to this than just believing there's a God. And all He is is the Supreme Being. No, there's three of them. And it's not just Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is giver to this one and this one gives to that one and that one gives to that one and and if and for each one that gives the others back him up and and take care of him it is the most incredible beauty it, but it's just it just sounds like well it's the trinity it's the teaching of the trinity man i you know if i if i believed anything that Randy ever said, if I was sitting out there, I would tell you, you need to get on your knees and ask God to open up Himself as Elohim, as love to you and make it so real that your relationship will never be the same again and it will never be focused on what you have. What you do, well, everything you touch, you for sure, it will be out of that spirit, that same spirit that Jesus did. The, the Father is greater than me. I do this for the Father. The, you know, all, all of that. And the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to speak of myself. It's, we wouldn't speak of ourselves. We wouldn't promote ourselves. We wouldn't talk about what we've done. We wouldn't talk about what we're going to do. We wouldn't present that as if, oh, let's get everybody, let's get all the Ishmaels excited. We would talk about the other. We would. Because it wouldn't be all just down here. Our hands and our feet would serve something eternal. They would walk in it. Anyway. Pretty sure we're not going to get, get through this thing now. So um, I put these first three verses seem to emphasize the benefit based on another member of Elohim called Adonai. All right, so verse eight, let's, let's go there. Still in um, uh, Psalm 16, verse eight. <clears throat> okay, so this is, you got to remember, Peter has absolutely confirmed that these verses are Jesus speaking. And he says, and David saw him and wrote of him. That's what he says. So this is Jesus. I have set the Lord always before me. Oh my God, that's the, of course you have. You know, again, you know, the Trinity or Elohim here. Of course you have, you know, the, the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit. So if it's, you know, he, he's not just in the trial. His nature is to set everything upon one or the other. 
okay? And they will do exactly the same. You say, well, that won't work in the earth because we're all selfish. But we'll work among those who will, <clears throat> who will go after God with all their heart, soul, and strength, and mind, and, you know, and, and make that really everything um, and your neighbor as yourself. Um, so uh, I've set the Lord always before me. Well, he's, in, he's on the cross. Again, Peter confirmed that this is cross stuff. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. And I was reading it and I saw his right hand and it was nailed to a cross. Because if I believe the book of Acts and the New Testament and what they say of that and that he is at this point going through the cross and the, and the trials that led up to it, then I could see his hand. And he says, he is at my right hand. We would go, this hurts. I'm bleeding. Get me out of this. Lord, where are you? See, that's, that's the problem. So much of the time people are crying out, Lord, where are you? And he's right there. But they don't know him on the right basis, so they don't think he's even there. They don't get it. It's just, this, is all, this whole thing is about, you know, healing and blessing me and taking care of me and doing all that. See, that's Abraham before he saw it in, in chapter 18. And, and what did he do then after that? You read it. You read it after, after he calls him Adonai. You read the whole chapter, well, up till the time they get up to leave. And it is, it is totally, it's almost as if another person got brought into that spirit. Well, while we're not God, we can have the divine nature within us. No, if you're born again, you do. But just having him in there does not guarantee anything of giving back to God what he wants. And I was a while ago talking about, well, why am I doing this? Because it's my deal and it's my... No, it's his deal. And I believe this with all my heart. I believe that this is the way he is before the world ever was or existed. This is the way he is. And when it's all wrapped up in the end, he's still going to be this way. But he's going to have gathered a whole bunch around the slaughtered lamb. Into the slaughtered lamb joined to, married to, if you will, wife of the Lamb. And that's it. I mean, you know, haven't you ever wondered why they didn't describe heaven? Doesn't that seem weird? You know, well, you say, well, you know, they did. You know, streets of gold and all that. No, that was a description of the wife of the Lamb. <laughs> Excuse me. But see, we're just... We just don't get it because we're it, we in our carnal mind would go, you know, he should tell us, you know, like, what are we going to do on Wednesdays and stuff like that. We're just so messed up, you know, and I'm not I'm not mocking you or laughing at you. I am just laughing at the ridiculousness of the carnal mind in relationship, which which Paul said is an enemy of God. Elohim. <laughs> I mean, you just, I'm just, if you, you know, and maybe some of you have seen this better than I have and more than I have. But then, then if so, you're either laughing with me or crying because it's just pretty powerful. You know, you could, you could just flip through the Bible and go, see how this relates to that? And okay, see, this relates to that too. See, this too. You know, when I say that, this relates to that. See, right here, this is how this works. This comes into that. It's got, it, it does, it does, it does, it does. You know, I was thinking about this and this, you know, 
I was thinking about uh, the parable of the sower. And uh, Jesus said, some seed falls by the wayside. And he said, the fowls of the air come and get it. Okay, so I'm just meditating on that because I'm just trying to, you know, figure this thing out and just hear from the Lord. And the scripture says, uh, Jesus' explanation is, he that understands, understands it not, he that doesn't understand this, the seed, the word, the seed is the word, he that doesn't understand it, the fowls of the air come and they take it out of his heart. Okay. And I thought, okay, help me, help me see that one. And he said, many times my word goes forth to people. And they sit there and they go, well, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. This is their, this is their response. And when they say they don't understand it, they, then they close off. They say, well, you know, it's either too deep or too hard or too much or, you know, whatever. So, so I don't want to, you know, it's almost like I don't want to give the effort to understand it. But let me tell you, all this stuff, it takes effort to understand it. God's not going to just open it to somebody who's, who pretty much is just wandering, not on the path, but by the wayside. They're the ones who don't understand it. Okay. But here's, here, what? So what if I'm sitting somewhere and somebody's teaching something and I don't understand it? Well, that's not the end of it. And, and I'm sure for many of you it's not either. But for me, it's, Father, I don't understand this, but Jesus is my life. And you also, you put Jesus in me, one of Elohim, you put Jesus in me, and then you sent the Holy Spirit and put the Holy Spirit in me. And you want me to understand this? So I'm not going to re remain in not understanding this. More importantly, because I believe uh, what I said earlier, that we, we just close off, well, I don't get it, and this is, it's too much, and so, you know, we, do, we don't even try. Uh, this is, I don't understand it, but... You want me to understand it, and uh, you can bring me into these things, not Randy, not based on even his teaching, but you can do that. And I desire you and so so the word sticks instead of is taken, which we allow the fowls to take it by just laying there on the wayside. Well, uh, what can I do about it? You know, he steals the word all the time. And, you know, if it's a big, you know, we call, we talk about 5,000 piece puzzles. If it's a big 8 billion trillion quadrillion piece puzzle that is God, um, the only way to start understanding it is to take that one piece and go, okay, well, I got this. I don't understand it, but help me work it and fit it with another one. And so this is taking some time. You're not just wasting time. You're showing him your heart is for him more than it is for the rest of all the, you know. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, not seek the kingdom of God. Well, I'm seeking it. Why are you seeking it first? Well, not really. <laughs> um, so, so this thing of not understanding is, is your enemy because it makes you close down. And it makes you um, settle for being wayside seed. You settle. You, you settle into that and you probably think, or, or they probably think, the one Jesus was referring to, probably think that, well, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the word of the kingdom, you know, and um, 
And it's going to take root here in the, you know, in the wayside. <laughs> it may not be over there, but it'd be good. No, you you cut it off when you say, I don't understand it, so I'm not even going to try. You, you will never understand it by your own efforts, but you try by saying what I said that you say to the Father and the, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you say, it's not that I don't want to be wayside. It's not that I don't want the fowls of the air. I want to understand it because it's understanding you and I'm seeking you first and because I love you first. Anyway, I don't... I'm, Forgive me. You know, Randy just rants and raves. <laughs> I do, don't I? Don't I? Uh, you know, you probably had enough of me tonight. We'll quit. Um, my heart's desire, and, and again, I mean, I... I I'm blessed that, you know, that you are with me and you are hungry. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking to you as I point to that thing and everybody gets it on their screen or whatever. But I so desire. My desire is not my desire for me. I do, you know, the, the Lord, you know, what's the scripture say? The, the Lord will give us the desires of our heart. Well, okay, yeah, okay. Well, wouldn't you like a nice uh, uh, Tesla electric car? Why didn't he give you that? He, if you read the scriptures around it, your desire has to be him. And when your desire is after him, he wants to give you the desires of your heart. So keep pressing, keep hungering, keep, you know, spend some time in the Word. Keep um, praying the right way. Um, and when you hear things, that you either don't understand or you do understand and they scare you so you want to act like you didn't hear them. Just say, Father, I believe that you're not trying to destroy me or, or saying I'm whatever, a reject. You're trying to get me on the path. And I pray that for you regularly because I love you and he loves you and I, I see how much he loves you. So, so I'm here. Let's pray. Father, there is, there is that reality of your heart that from the very beginning you created all things for Him and then you put Him in us and you wanted us to grow up in Him in all things. Father, we, we need Your Word to... Lord, in some cases it really is feels like the, the, the seed has been buried and then cement it over, but we've all seen a seed break through concrete. There is a joy, and it's not a joy to us, Father. We didn't even get to those scriptures. But we will next time. There is a joy and a gladness in these verses that are special. And we can, we can revel in you. We can glory in you. We can not just praise you during a worship service, but apart from a worship service, 
extol you and exalt you and 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 honor you not just in word but in the way that we proceed father we think we think so much upon ministry as if that's that's the key that if we're doing it for you in that way but it's not the same as Elohim how they do it it's not the same and how would we know if your spirit doesn't open our hearts and how would we ever see if he does not open our eyes but first our hearts first break through to our hearts we ask in Jesus name Amen. 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 Amen.